Hey, Mike here in the Bigfoot. Um, did a little bit of wiring here recently. We went on vacation, went camping one night uh, last weekend. Um, first night we spent in the Squatch, first time we cooked in the Squatch. Um, really got to test it out, see how well it runs, climb some hills, um, about a two hour drive up into Washington. It was, it was great. Um, but before I left, I scrounged around and did some rewiring here. Um, I wanted to have uh, a power inverter installed and I got this unit uh, off a guy uh, along with a bunch of other stuff and it just kind of came along with the with the package deal and um, it's a big beefy unit 4,000 watts I think 2,000 per per outlet there and um, uh, modified sine wave nothing special um, got to kind of be careful about what you run on it I could run that LED TV up there um, I don't think it cares what kind of power it gets um, the microwave, eh, I don't know. I'm a little, a little concerned about something like that. Uh, I don't know. The transformer might get particularly hot because uh, it's not very good power. It's pushing, you know, some DC in there. So, um, but short bursts. I ran it for 30 seconds. You know, maybe two minutes. Uh, I don't know. But uh, it's nice to have. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, to set up the the inverter, I didn't want to. Uh, just use like the existing wiring, which is a six gauge wire that uh, everything that ran to the batteries. And I actually rewired, ran two watt cables to the batteries, and um, and so I have two watt cables feeding all the way up to the the power inverter. And uh, this shunt over here, um, I wanted to reroute all the grounds through this shunt because that supplies information to my battery monitor here. So um, so like I said, all the grounds. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, this cable right here actually runs, um, directly from the battery and then, uh, on the top side is distributed to the inverter, um, to my solar charge controller here, the Santrex C35, and, um, and then back down to the frame where it's bolted to the frame which distributes grounds to everywhere else. Um, <clears throat> the inverter itself, I actually have it set up so, um, somewhat temporarily because it doesn't have any uh, uh, permanent uh, 110 um, terminals it just has these outlets here so I just wired in a uh, uh, extension cord into my breaker box so I can just plug it directly in and it feeds uh, 110 AC to the to everything and then I have this uh, female plug here just stuck on there uh, because whenever I'm plugged into say an extension cord to the house the grid uh, or the generator is running this is live so I don't want male prongs just sticking out all willy-nilly so I just shove that on there it's, it's works for now um, important feature of the power inverter the way the way that it's wired up because it feeds 110 to the panel and everything else some considerations need to be made uh, for one this is the main right here that shuts everything off um, and then this is the uh, converter. Everything else doesn't really matter. The microwave and bedrooms and stuff. But the uh, converter converts 110 AC into 12 volts DC, which will supply power to the uh, uh, entire 12 volt system, including charging the battery. Now, uh, it would be very unwise to use the inverter, run off the batteries, to run through the converter to charge the batteries. Not going to work. It's just going to kill your batteries. So, um, one of the procedures for firing up the converter is flipping the, uh, or firing up the inverter is to, to flip the, the converter off. Uh, another thing that needs to be uh, known is that uh, out here, for the plug for the tying into the grid or the generator needs to be completely unplugged. So I have to check that yes, in fact, I'm not plugged into the grid. And there's an outlet back in here, which is uh, uh, supplies power from the generator up front there. Um, kind of an idiot-proof way to keep you from uh, plugging your generator into the grid. You only have this one plug, so um, I didn't design that luxury, making it idiot-proof. I just have to not be an idiot, so I don't fry my inverter or possibly my generator. If I fed power from the inverter into the generator, that could. Uh, very well screw some stuff up. So uh, the other thing I have going on here is um, I 
put this solenoid in uh, to replace the existing one. That actually connects the battery from the truck to the uh, coach batteries down here and um, uh, get a little charging off the alternator. When this ignition wire is uh, powered through this terminal here, it's supposed to uh, charge the coach batteries. What I found was uh, the original solenoid wasn't opening up entirely whenever you shut the ignition off. So I replaced it with this one and found that uh, it gets ridiculously hot and uh, starts to stink. So I would imagine it's not designed for continuous use. Um, what I may do is find one that is or keep it simple and just put a switch in. So if I want to run the truck, which isn't very often, uh, get a little charging off it, I just got to come back here and flip a switch. And remember, it's uh, it's on. Maybe something with a red light or something like that would be a good idea. Um, the other thing is, uh, like I said, this charge controller Zentrex that came with the kit of stuff that I got off a of guy, C35, 35 amp. Um, <clears throat> wired that up. I have these panels out here, which also came with the kit. Um, I was mostly interested in the wind turbine he had, but uh, he had these panels too he was getting rid of. So I said, well, I'll play with them. Uh, there's something wrong with them. There's this black, you see it there blue around the outside edge like the way the PVs are supposed to be and then there's this black in the middle I don't know if dirt water got in there something grew in there and then cooked in the Sun but it looks awful and not all the cells are exactly the same that one actually has kind of a strip to it there so um, yeah there's something wrong with them they're 85 and a half watts piece two of them uh, I'm probably putting 70 watts in my batteries right now and I got pretty good Sun so um, they're they're not in great shape, but I'll play with them for a while. Um, I just have it wired up with an uh, extension cord. Um, uh, it's 12 gauge. And I put these 110 AC plugs there so I can easily unplug this, throw it in the hole here, and um, uh, put my panels away. So I'll play with it over the next couple of days. Not a wise thing to do to use this style of plug, but um, it's all I had and uh, works for me, and I know what it is. so. I'm not about to plug uh, an extension cord into it and fry my uh, fry my whole electrical system, fry my controller. Um, so um, that's about it. Other than the uh, battery monitor here itself, uh, it's pretty slick. Um, uh, it monitors voltage, uh, amps, uh, calculates watts based on that. You can program it to um, for your specific batteries set up the amp hour capacity of your batteries and um, uh, it actually even has some accessories you can install to do uh, like a temperature compensation uh, depending on the temperature of the battery um, um, program it for charge efficiency and um, um, it and the, the simplest feature of it that I enjoy the most really is just the uh, uh, well the accumulated amp hours which doesn't display anything right now um, not sure why, because it displayed the other day, but I think it might reset daily. Um, there's a there's a setting in here you can go in and look at the cumulative amp hours for the the, the life of the unit. But I think this might actually just be for uh, today. Um, percent charge, which that actually should show something, because it was about 90 percent when I pulled it in the other day. <clears throat> and even though I disconnected power from it, it's non volatile memory. I wouldn't think it would have would have reset that. Uh, the hours that you have left. Um, in your batteries uh, based on the number of amps that are currently being drawn. Um, not particularly useful, um, but if you're not changing the load very often or very much, um, give you some indication of how much time you have. Um, but um, but just the percent charge, uh, just give you kind of a gas meter for, uh, for your batteries to know not to get down there, you know, close or lower than 50%. Uh, I am gonna mount this thing in the in the wall somewhere um, when I get a drill with a half inch chuck um, but yeah the thing is pretty nifty it's got a heck of a long cord if you wanted to run it somewhere uh, I don't require that um, nothing else really to speak of in here I did have to clean this hole up a little bit and uh, um, this door didn't exist before oh, I got my cord in there of course um, so I couldn't even get in there um, there's uh, the airlines off of the heater that I kind of removed and set aside so I get in here and do a little bit of work. Um, but yeah, that's my um, that's my wiring for this this week. I'm um, happy for now. I do have a wind uh, controller disconnect or just disconnect switch that I would like to install and get it wired up so I can 
play with the uh, wind turbine, set it up a little bit and play with it. And over the next couple of days, I'm going to just keep um, keep plugging at these uh, solar panels and get to know my battery monitor and, and my batteries a little bit better. So, thanks for watching. Oh, and hope you didn't learn anything from this because uh, I am uh, just starting on this. <laughs> I don't know much about it, but uh, I am trying and trying to keep it neat. Thanks.